My name is Laura Bernheim. I'm the Head of Reference at the Waltham Public Library. Today I'm going to show you how to make my Grandma Alice Bernheim's Chicken Soup in Matzo Balls. This is a recipe that has been in my family for multiple generations. My grandmother received the recipe from my great-grandma Clara Bernheim, that is my grandmother's mother-in-law, and my grandmother has passed it on to me, her granddaughter of course, as well as to my mother, her daughter-in-law. This is, the soup itself is actually a very easy recipe. It requires no cutting for the most part, and it just requires a lot of patience. The matzo balls do require a bit more work. However, please make peace with the fact they may not come out the first time. That is okay. Although traditionally, this is a soup that you eat during Passover, which is, starts tomorrow night at the recording of this video. I know by the time you see it, Passover will have most likely been over or at least be in the middle but you i eat this year round my grandmother used to make this for me every time i visited what was nice about having it outside of passover is the other days of the year we, or the other weeks of the year i should say we could have egg noodles in it as well tonight i'm not going to have it with you with egg noodles because i'm going to have it as you would have it during the eight days of passover or during a seder in which you would not have anything with flour or yeast of course, egg noodles have flour in them. Um, so to start, I'm gonna sh tell you the ingredients for the chicken soup. So of course, you need chicken soup, so you need chicken. My grandmother's recipe calls for four double chicken breasts. I enhanced that a little bit. I actually, what I do is I just buy several parts of the chicken and I put it all together in the bowl as I've shown you. Um, just to save time, I don't buy a whole chicken, um, partly because this way I don't have to take it apart, which if you have a big enough pot, you don't have to do. My pot is not quite big enough, but also I don't have to deal with taking out the innards, which not my thing. So I just buy several parts of the chicken and I put it in a bowl and set it aside. What's also required is one potato one large tomato. This is an heirloom tomato, but you can buy any large tomato. One large onion, two parsnips, a half a bunch of celery. This is about a half a bunch. My grandmother's recipe calls for six carrots. I did seven in this case because some are small. Fresh dill, and make sure you use fresh dill. Do not use um, spice dill. It will not taste the same. As well as parsley. I strongly suggest you tie it. You can just use regular string to tie it. And then of course salt. Um, I just use the Morton's regular salt. Although I do often use kosher salt for many recipes, I do not for this recipe. For the matzo balls, you need matzo meal. I use Manischewitz brand. Yes, Manischewitz does not just make wine. They actually make several products. Make sure you buy matzo meal, not matzo ball mix. That will have extra ingredients that you don't need. This is purely just ground up matzo. Four eggs that we will beat later, as well as water. And of course, I should have mentioned for the soup, you need water. Do not use for the soup, do not use any canned or store-bought chicken broth. That will ruin the flavor. Okay, so first, we are going to get our pot. In this case, this is my soup pot. I'm going to put in the vegetables first. Now, it actually doesn't matter what order you put them in. You can put in the chicken first. You can put in the vegetables first. I like to put the vegetables first just to make it a little easier. I should also add, as I mentioned, this family has been eating this soup for a long time. When I was a child, I was not a huge fan of vegetables, and this truly was probably the only way I got any vegetable intake was because of this soup. So putting in my potato, my parsley, which remember I tied up, my dill, remember my fresh dill, my onion. If you notice, I haven't had to cut anything. I'm literally just putting these in whole. That's how easy this is. My tomato, not cutting it. My half a bunch of celery. Now this, it's pretty big, so I am gonna break it. Rest in. My parsnips. And finally, my carrots. 
Now my chicken, I'm gonna place in. Now whenever I cook with chicken, I really like to use disposable gloves. I get very nervous about working with raw chicken. I also make sure I wash my hands a lot as I'm cooking, regardless of what I'm cooking, even if I'm not working with raw meat, but especially with raw chicken. And I always have, I use, I love using disposable gloves when I cook. I always have them on hand in my kitchen. I was very well prepared a year ago when people were using disposable gloves when going to the grocery store. I already had a supply because I use them in my cooking. So now I'm just going to put the chicken in the pot. And just fill in the corners nice. So you can't really see that well, but so I'm filling it in. I'm just putting it in the pot. And here we have, you can see. So now I'm gonna take off my gloves. I'm gonna put them inside the bowl where my chicken was. So it doesn't touch anything else. I'm gonna wash my hands. And now I'm going to add water into the pot. So we're gonna come over to the sink. I'm gonna take you with me. And we're just gonna let, there it is. And you just fill this till it's completely full. Okay, as you now can see, our pot is full of water and is now on the stove. I'm going to put on medium to slightly medium high. And we're going to leave it for at least, at least, this is very important, at least one and a half hours. After one and a half hours, you can taste it. Do not try tasting it before then. You're dealing with raw chicken, you're just gonna eat water with raw chicken, and that's not good for you or anyone. Um, I tend to go closer to two, two and a half. Sometimes I've even gone three hours, but do test it to make sure. Um, the amount of chicken I put in always varies. Like any family recipe, a lot of this recipe uh, doesn't have exact uh, quantities in it so we're going to do that oh and I forgot the salt so we're going to add the salt um, as it's in the water so to do that I'm put and uh, just a small bit in my hand and we just add it all around I don't put too, too much salt because there's already so much flavor in here anyway. And then one thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a spoon and mix it up. So what I'm doing now, I'm not really mixing it per se, but I just wanna make sure the salt gets in everywhere. So I very often do, like I did this evening, I always add the salt in the end. I like to pretend that it's because it's because of the recipe, but honestly, it's usually because I forget. And it's okay if you add it this late. It tastes just as good. In fact, there's so much flavor, some would even argue you don't need the salt as much. I think it needs, it still needs a little bit of salt. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the matzo balls. So now we are going to make our matzo balls. And this is the part of the recipe I do find a little bit more difficult. This, again, um, takes a long time to get uh, just right, but that's okay. Even the first time, if they don't come out great, I bet they'll still taste good. So we are, need four eggs, and it's very important that you beat them thoroughly. So I'm gonna crack each egg into my bowl here. Okay, and now just take a whisk or the mixer of your choice. I like a whisk for hand mixing, although I might cheat a little and put in the electric mixer. You won't see that through the magic of TV. It'll look like I used the hand whisk the whole time. And we're just gonna beat them. Here we go. And just keep beating them until they're nice 
made some fluffy. Okay, so we are all done, or I am all done, I should say, mixing um, my eggs that I 100% thoroughly did by hand. No aid of a mixer, completely, completely true. No, I'm totally lying to you. I actually did use an electric mixer, and this is the result. Look at how nice and foamy that is. So make sure the eggs are thoroughly mixed. So now we're gonna add a little bit of salt. Again, I don't have an exact amount to add, family recipe, um, but just a little bit. Again, there's so much flavor, but we wanna do put some salt in them. So just a little small, just short of a handful, and we're just gonna drop it in. And I'm gonna use my whisk for real this time, I'm not lying to you. And now I'm just gonna mix a little bit more just to get the salt all thoroughly spread in. And now we're gonna add just the first bit of our matzo meal. So again, as I said in the beginning of the video, I use Manischewitz brand matzo meal. You can use any brand, but just please make sure it's matzo meal and not matzo ball mix. They are very different. Matzo meal is literally just ground up matzo. There's nothing else in it. So I'm gonna take a quarter of a cup, and it's okay if you don't level off, it's not exact baking. And I'm gonna add some to my bowl. And I'm gonna use a whisk, again for real, I'm not lying to you this time, and I'm just gonna mix it up. And I'm just gonna take another quarter cup, Again, it doesn't have to be leveled off. This isn't baking, it's a little different. Add it in, and we're just gonna mix. And now this is where you have to make a judgment call. Once you go a half a cup of matzo meal, do you add more, or are you good? I usually add a little more, but just a little bit at a time. You wanna make sure you're able to make a nice matzo ball, pretty much the same consistency as you would almost a meatball, for those of you who make meatballs. So I'm gonna add just not quite a quarter of a cup, maybe I guess an eighth of a cup, it's about a half of a quarter cup. I'm gonna add that, I'm gonna continue mixing. This is getting a little bit harder to mix, which is good. But we also don't want them to, what we used to call clunkers when I was a kid. It's very hard to get the consistency right for this, I agree. All right, I'm just gonna add, I'm gonna risk it, I'm just gonna add a little bit more of just quite, of what we probably determined was an eighth of a cup. I'm gonna mix that up. All right. Let that drop with our whisk. Okay, now, I'm gonna get in with my hands, and this is where I use my gloves. I love using my gloves when I cook. Put them on. I know it's so hard to cook last spring when it was so hard to get these gloves after I ran out of them. And I'm just sort of getting in there, down and dirty, just like I would a meatloaf, or again with meatballs, just pounding it. And I'm sorry for the noise, the whole all right, and all the matzo meal is mixed in. I'm gonna take my gloves off. We're gonna change gloves several times. So now my grandma Alice had a secret. She used to use a cup of water in between making each matzo ball. And make sure it's cold water. I actually had this in the refrigerator. And in the magic of television, you didn't see me bring it out, but I did. And again, I am gonna use the gloves again. And I do apologize, I know this is a little wasteful, but I, I really do find cleanup a lot easier when using gloves. And I do still wash my hands in between. You haven't seen me, I've, I've been washing my hands probably three or four times over the course of everything. Very important to wash your hands while you're cooking. Number one rule of cooking. Okay, so I'm gonna take my, my hand, I'm gonna dip it in the cold water, as you can see here. Dip in both of them. Just gonna grab a handful and I'm gonna make, just again, just like a meatball, a little matzo ball, and I'm gonna put it in this Pyrex dish. 
This is just for keeping. We're not going to bake them. You'll see in a minute. And again, I'm going to dip my hand with the glove in the cold water. And you might ask, what does the cold water do? I don't actually know, but it works. And she made, in my opinion, the best matzo balls ever. So if it wasn't broke, don't fix it. And keep going on and on. Okay, so I have rolled um, the last of my matzo balls and I put them in my Pyrex dish. Now, through the magic of television, if you will, I actually did do a completely separate or another um, recipe. So I actually now have two recipes. And I think it's actually important to tell you that because uh, one thing that I should emphasize or mention, the longer you beat your eggs before adding the matzo meal and the salt, the fluffier your matzo balls will be. And fluffy matzo balls are what? chef's kiss. They're wonderful. Now, I think actually my second set, so the one I made when the camera was off, I actually think it's going to be fluffier than the first. Because if you see, it's, hard, it's kind of hard to tell, but this is from my second batch that I made. Those are lighter than the ones for the first batch. The lighter the color, the more likely they are going to be fluffier. I think these will still be good. I'm not too worried about them, but these will definitely be a lot fluffier. Just something to keep in mind, if you like fluffy, uh, matzo balls, definitely keep uh, whipping your eggs for a lot longer. Again, either with a whisk or with an electric mixer, either a stand-up or a hand electric mixer. Honestly, I do all three tonight. I have to admit I did use an electric mixer for beating the eggs, but I have used the whisk as well, so it's, it's good exercise. Okay, so I'm going to put these aside, as I said. You can put them in the refrigerator, you can leave them out depending on the temperature. You don't have to leave them out. My grandmother actually, in her recipe to me, never mentioned refrigerating or putting them aside, but I like to because we need time to boil our water. So I just get a pot. I use this size, just this way in case there's less of a chance of anything boiling over. This is slightly smaller than the pot I used for my soup. I'm just gonna fill it up probably to about maybe here with water, put a little bit of salt, and we're just gonna set it to boil. That's all, we're just gonna wait for it to boil. As I mentioned, this recipe takes a lot of waiting. All right, so I'm gonna fill this with water just from the tap. We'll put it on the stove, and then uh, I'll uh, be checking back in to uh, when I put these in water. All righty. Okay, now I'm gonna drop them into the boiling water, as I said. I do apologize, the light um, from my kitchen uh, is a little awkward here, but unfortunately because of the placement of my stove, uh, this is the only way. So hopefully you can still see. So I'm going to take this, drop it in, you can see the water, and I'm just going to drop it in, just like that. I'm not actually touching the water, I'm just dropping. Okay, I dropped my last one into the pot. I'm gonna cover it just slightly, not all the way. As you can see, I don't have it completely covered. And I'm gonna set my timer now for 40 minutes. Okay, our matzo balls are now finished, so I'm gonna take those off the stove. Remove my pot lid. Here. So in the sink, I have a strainer. And just like I would with pasta, I'm just gonna dump this into the strainer. And here we have my matzo balls. Okay, our soup is done. I've tried it. And it is fabulous. So I'm gonna take it off the heat. I have just now, I have a setup. I have a colander on top of a pot. I'm gonna take my pot. It's very heavy, so be very careful when you do this. And I'm just 
gonna pour the soup into the colander. Again, make sure it's on top of another pot, otherwise you'll lose all that lovely soup. All right. And we're gonna move this. And our soup, we have an entire pot of chicken soup. Now, as for the rest of the items in the soup, I'm gonna show you what to do with that. Okay, so we have our soup, our accoutrements from inside the soup, and of course, our matzo balls. So what you want are three different containers. One is gonna be for waste, one is gonna be for our vegetables, and one is gonna be for our chicken. So I always use a pair of togs, and we are going to save in the vegetable portion, the potato, the carrots, and these carrots, by the way, are fabulous. Oh, they're so good. The parsnips, and if I can find it, the onion. Hi everyone, this is Laura. Sorry to interrupt your video. I just want to let you know that I accidentally said to save the onion. I meant to say save the tomato. The onion is going to be one of the items that you discard when the soup is done. You are going to save the tomato. It tastes really good and juicy with all of the uh, dill and everything on it. So save the tomato, discard the onion. Okay, back to the video. Thank you. And we also will save the celery. We are going to discard the dill. The parsley, if I can find that, some of it, and we're also going to discard the onion. And then what you can do is when you serve the soup with the matzo ball, you can put some of the vegetables in it, you can put some of the chicken in it, or you can leave them separate. It's entirely up to you. I like to make chicken salad with the chicken myself. There's some great chicken salad recipes, and the chicken itself already has a lot of great flavor. The dill itself really gives it a nice nice flavor sometimes i just eat the chicken alone the carrots as well like i said they're just fabulous i sometimes like them in the soup itself or sometimes as a side with the soup and as i mentioned earlier the only vegetables i ate often were from this chicken soup so that is my grandma alice bernheim's chicken soup recipe i hope you enjoyed it and again it's really not a lot of work it's a lot of time and waiting around so enjoy a good book. I know a place where you can get one. Um, or some, there's a lot of great TV right now. Some games, you name it. And as long as you have time to do that, you'll have time to wait for your meal. So enjoy SNS, which means eat meat in Yiddish. And good night. Thank you.